everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, and this week is a special week because this is the week before E3. Oh boy. And it's a bit of a tough week for me because like on Thursday I'm going on a little vacation with my family and I'm coming back like right when E3 starts. A lot of work hasn't started yet, so I'm not overwhelmed yet, but uh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Just look forward. We have, we have a bunch of things in the pipeline to, to get you guys hyped up for E3 before it happens. But for our first topic this week, Eric Moore over here and Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz. Almost forgot those intros in there. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be talking a little bit about the, what I'm calling the headset fiasco with Nintendo Switch. So back in January, Nintendo announced that voice chat would be through an app on a phone. And we just kind of said, oh, maybe that'll be an option. That was always a hope. Like, oh, it's okay if it's an option. They didn't make it sound like it was an option. Yeah. But we're like, oh, maybe it'll just be an option. All right. Fast forward. We finally get a glimpse at voice chat on Switch due to a third party. I am noting, for those out there who think I forgot, it's a third party headset for the Nintendo Switch. However, it's officially licensed and being promoted by Nintendo, and it's actually included in some bundles in Japan for Splatoon 2. Oh, yay. So, I know some people want to dismiss it, but, I mean, Nintendo is promoting it. So, I'll put it to you this way. Were there Nintendo headsets for any other system? No, not Nintendo-branded ones. Yeah, no. It's always been third party. And I know people say, oh, but the Wii U, like they didn't have voice chat in Nintendo games. But there was voice chat in other games on Wii U. Mm -hmm. So like voice chat existed on Wii U. In fact, the solution Wii U had, pretty basic and is better than what we're getting now with a paid online service. Yay. So (laughs) what they have done with Splatoon 2 is they've created what looks like, it looks like a pretty cool headset. The headset itself looks fine. We don't know the quality of the mic or the speakers, but like the look of it looks fine. Yeah, it looks yeah. very Splatoon 2, like very hipster, very like in with it, like in with the cool, you know, behind the head. and it Whatever, it looks fine. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with the headset itself. But how it connects to voice chat and audio in the game is... N- okay, I'm, before I get into my opinions, I guess I'll just say what it, what it is. So the headphones plug into a little squiddling dongle. That dongle has two wires coming from it. One that plugs into your phone, which enables your voice chat through their voice chat app. Another that plugs into the Switch itself, which gives you the game audio. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like an audio splicer. It's bringing two sources together into one headset. Audio splicing is a thing that exists. It's it's existed forever. People do it when when they're setting up their home theater systems. It happens all the time. But when they do that, it's a set and forget. Yep. You set it up, and you never have to touch it again unless you're adding a new device to the setup. And then once that's set up, you never have to touch it again. Uh, audio splicing for things like voice chat hasn't really been around in decades. Like, PCs fixed this issue a long time ago. And I know some people will bring up the fact that there's still PC headsets today that aren't USB, that have you know a, a sound and a, and a separate microphone. Yep. But those inputs are literally right next to each other, and it's still one cord coming from your headset that just splits right at the end into yep. inputs yep, on a, sing- much so. a single device. Yep. Key point there. So this has been fixed forever. When Xbox brought gaming to, to online and had voice chat, it did not have two devices to do it. It was one device. Yep, it plugged into your controller and went to your head. and Yeah, period. Yeah. And I know some people say maybe it's a design fault with Nintendo where... Oh, they don't, uh, you know, they didn't put a port on the 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 Pro controller or the Joy-Con grip controller, and that's why they have to do this solution. And to that, I always say, I think Bluetooth headsets been around forever. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. I mean, they've been around almost as long as Bluetooth's been around. It, mm-hmm. Like, like I was using it with my old flip phones back in the early two thousands. Like Bluetooth is an easy solution to this where you can just say, well, Nintendo's just cutting the cords. Yep. It's a portable system. You don't want cords, so you Bluetooth it. Yep. I mean, think about how many people, when they have their phones, even today, even with all the tech we have, still have those Bluetooth earpieces. Oh, yeah. Because they don't want to run a cord. There's even people that wear Bluetooth headphones when they're out jogging. And even Apple is now promoting you know, wireless headphones because they don't have the headphone jack. Yeah. They want you to use wireless headphones when you're jogging because it's still more convenient. You eliminate the cord. Yep. 
Okay, uh, even though there there are more comfortable, there are issues with eliminating the corner, especially with like the ear pods, you can lose one, etc. But the point, the grander point here is that cords are not convenient, and it's already inconvenient enough to have a single cord. People have generally accepted that's okay at times. Like my mouse, they make wireless mouse, but I still use one with the cord because I have a better response rate with it. Just like right. a lot of people use wireless controllers with their consoles, like the Switch. But technically, wired controllers are still better. There's less latency. Yep. But sound, that's not as big of an issue. People have no problem with the wirelessness of their sound. So when I see this convoluted setup, I just think a couple things. Either voice chat was an afterthought or Nintendo never wanted you to use voice chat in the first place. And all they are doing is giving you voice chat so they could tick a box and say, we have voice chat too. Yeah. And I wouldn't have a problem yeah. if that's all, like if all Nintendo wanted to do was say, look, we have voice chat. You had that on Wii U. Yeah. Yes, they did. And it was just a wire plugged into your system, plugged into your gamepad, like, like everyone else. Yep. Yeah. You didn't have the online infrastructure. You didn't have the lobbies. You didn't have, you know, the, the easy, you know, they did have video chat for a while, but they didn't make it easy but it was doable and convenient in terms of just the act of chatting. Mm -hmm. This isn't even the act of getting a group together to chat and everything. That's what the app is supposed to make really, really easy. This is just the act of chatting requires I have to plug something into my Switch and plug something into my phone and then plug that into a device and then plug something into that device Mm -hmm. to listen. Yeah. Three chords for a one-chord problem. Yep. Or a cordless problem. <laughs> um, so what are your thoughts on this, Eric? Uh, yeah, I know. I, the, the second I walked into your office and you showed me the picture, I'm like, what the hell is that? And then you said what it was and I was like, you've got to be crapping me. In, in not so polite terms. <laughs> this just seems absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I just, again, we've talked about comfort and you know the whole portability thing this does not make it any easier to this actually makes it harder to portable what's funny about the portability factor right and people who paid a lot of attention back in january will know this reggie fees me because they because they talked about you know why they're doing this app and everything and you know we were not happy at the time but we were like, well, benefit of the doubt, benefit mm-hmm. of the Let's wait and see wh- what they do with it. Worst case scenario, oh, dang, I plug you know, earbuds into my phone and voice chat through it, and life is life, right? Like, yeah. whatever. You, you, that, that, that's what we basically thought was the worst case possible scenario. We had no idea, even a fleeting thought in our minds, that you would have to get the game audio off the Switch as well because the app isn't able to stream the audio from the system. That, that didn't, yeah. didn't really even cross our minds as a worst case scenario. A worst case scenario was... I have to use my phone for voice chat. Yep. Um, and that, while that didn't sound enticing to us, because, you know, like me, like it's not enticing to me at all to use my phone because my phone gets a zillion notifications. I I get emails on it. Mm-hmm. I have my business stuff coming through it. I got my personal stuff coming through it. Yep. I have app updates. Oh, sure. I have, you know, tons of stuff that is always draining the battery. And now I have to run a voice app. So I, I game for a three hour session. My phone's dead. Oh, and I, you probably I don't even get that out of it. Yeah. And I, I don't want, to deal with that i'll you know i just don't want to have to deal why would i deal with that when i have a system plugged in that's constantly powered right exactly anyways so you move you move into what reggie fils said back then on why they were going the voice app route and you're like okay i guess just benefit of the doubt and see what happens and he said they think they the, it was basically a comment on how they don't think clunky headsets make sense and then the first time we see legit voice chat on the switch one it's with a clunky headset that has an even clunkier setup. Yeah. At least the quote unquote what he defines as clunky. Yes. People who use those headsets don't think they're clunky. No, they, they're comfortable. Like we, like we said, they, they, the headsets aren't terrible. No, people don't have like the, the Splatoon Two headset looks fine. Uh, headsets in general, like when he said clunky, everyone was kind of like clunky. People wear it because that's comfortable. Yeah. It provides better sound and audio yeah. quality. They're not doing it because it's clunky. Yeah. No, no one like when I wear I have these they're, they're not super expensive but I have these these decent Sony headphones that my sister got me for Christmas 
because I wanted something that was more noise canceling when I'm mowing the lawn. And do you think I care that they're big? It would feel weird if it could noise cancel and not be big, to be honest. I'm like, how are you canceling out all the noise on my ear by not covering my ear? Yeah. So none of these like, oh, it's clunky. Yeah. Definitely. That's never been like earpods exist. If I think it's clunky, there's already a solution. Just use a different type of headphone, a different it's, type of headset. Right. Like like people choose to use the clunky because it's a better quality sound. Yep. It has noise cancellation. It is just generally a more pleasing experience, and they usually have higher quality microphones included with them. Voice versus like you know you wear an earbuds and you have a little mic down here. Those mics are okay. Yeah. But they're not great. Right, and you, sure. and so headset mics are usually better. Now we get to now, where the very first time we even see voice chat for the Switch. Forget if you've been to a store and you saw a headset that said, you know, supports the Switch. Fine. It, the, the, I've even seen wireless headsets that say supports the Switch. But you know how it supports the Switch with a Bluetooth thing you plug into the headphone jack that yep. gives you audio, which is exactly what we do sometimes when I'm live streaming. So I know that works, but we haven't heard a voice chat. Actually, it's like, oh, you bought a headset, but no one ever said the microphone was going to work natively with the Switch. Yeah. No one ever said that. Nintendo's never said that. So I know some people are like, this is just an option for a setup. And it's like, but Nintendo has never hinted that there's any other way to set it up but through your phone. Yeah, that's definitely true. That, that, I mean, I'm bringing this up. And wh- why I'm getting a little more passionate about you know what other people have said is I did a video on this. Um, and I admit it was a little bit of a, a little ranty. I was a little more upset than I'm, I wasn't able to talk it as calm, talk about it as calmly as I wanted. Like right now, I feel like I'm being rather calm. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people responded saying that I my criticism isn't legit, and that I, um, I, I guess the most recent comment I read was, was along the lines of I sound like a whiny brat because something doesn't work for me. This is just an option. There's going to be other ways to do it. And all I can say to that is that is, is I hope there's other ways to do it. I sincerely hope that like Nintendo at Ether is like, Hey dude, like you can do that or you can just get a Bluetooth headset. I would love if Nintendo just comes out and says that, but here's the thing. Nintendo has not deviated from the company line on this since they announced voice chat they have said 100 percent of the time you have to have the voice app yep and now we'll get into a topic later because now we know some specific details about nintendo's online system but in their online system listing now it specifically says voice app mm-hmm. is something that you're paying to get gain access to meaning that there's no other voice chat listed on there any anywhere else. Yeah. Everything Nintendo has said is that voice chat is through your phone, through your phone, through your phone. They've never deviated from that. So this setup to me tells me that it's not just it one, it supports the fact that voice chat's through your phone because you have to connect a cord to your phone, which mm-hmm. means that's probably your microphone and headphone for the voice chat lobbies. Yep. But now what what we're learning out of this setup is is that there is apparently no way, or at least no way that's publicly known, through the app to stream the audio of the game through that app as well. Meaning you have to have a splicer with two cords to get game audio and to get voice chat through the same headset. And that is what's archaic about this. And I know some people might be okay with this, and that's Mm -hmm. fine. If it doesn't bother you that you have to hook up three cords when it used to only take one or one cord and you want to argue it's just splicing in the two, fine. That's great that it does not bother you. But let me give you some examples of how this can bother you. And now I wish I would have brought my... I I knew I, I wanted to give some examples. So imagine that I'm holding my Switch. Well, let's pretend this phone is a Switch. All right? And let's pretend I have my, let's say this nut can. This nut can's nut the, can. the phone. This is the switch. All right. I grab a pair of headphones. I'm like, cool. I want to chat with my buddies while I'm playing some Splatoon 2. This should be great. So I go and I put, get my headset on and I plug it into my switch. Huh. There's no way to talk to anyone in here. Okay, cool. Let me plug it into, and granted, I'm in portable mode. Let me plug that into here. Cool. Now I'm chatting with my buddies. I can't hear my game. Mm-hmm. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, I know. Let me get an audio splicer. Oh, all right. So I'll plug a cord into here. 
plug a cord into here, plug my cord into the audio splicer, put it up to here. Huh. Doesn't seem too bad. Doesn't seem too bad. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, oh crap, I just unplugged it from my phone. Mm -hmm. Lost my audio. Yep. Crap, I just yanked the cord. And actually, if you know anything about those kind of cords, it's easy to crack them and have it not work correctly anymore. And then you got to adjust yep. it and hold it in position. <laughs> yep. And so Tape it in we, position. we've all, if you guys have used headphones over the years, you all know how it works. No matter how high quality the cable is, if you yank it around like that, that can happen. Yep. So now, how do I solve that? How do I solve the fact that there might be some yank? Mm -hmm. How do I how do I solve the fact that, you know, maybe I forget that I'm voice chatting through my phone because no other device in the world works this way. Yeah. And I stand up with my switch to go to the crapper, drag my phone with. Now, there it is, getting dragged along the ground. My phone gets tossed around. That's also now I'm cracking my phone. It's also and, saying that your cords are long enough. I know. What? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess I could have a 100-foot cord and then it never moves. No, right. <laughs> and the thing is, like, there have been convenient times for audio splicers. Say we're both watching a movie. Mm -hmm. Put it in, splice it off, two different headphones. Yeah. But here's the thing. We're not really moving this device, right, yeah. when we're watching yeah, the movie. Right. You're just sitting there watching it. When you are playing, you can't tell me that people just game, and when you're on the go, you're not adjusting around. You're not walking around. Oh, now i got my phone in my pocket, and I'm trying to voice chat with people while I'm, do while I'm doing this, and blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, my phone's jacked, and I don't realize it until all of a sudden my voice audio cuts out. Mm -hmm. There are so many situations where this doesn't make sense when you're portable right. at all. Now, let's imagine that we're in a couch situation. Mm -hmm. My Switch is up there in the dock. Yep. I'm playing on my TV. Here, uh, here, we'll make this the Switch in that case. <laughs> Here's my phone. There's the Switch. It's docked on the TV. All right. Let's pretend that this is about a good distance away. Let's say let's say we're about 10 feet away from the TV. we got a 60-inch TV. We're 10 feet away on the couch. Yeah. All right. So I'm like, cool. Got my voice app here. Get it on. Oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, cool, cool. Okay, let's plug the headphones in, put them on. Hey, we're chatting away, chatting away. Oh, hey, we're playing some tune. Man, I'm not really getting any audio feedback here. Like, why did I just get splattered from behind? I didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I have to run a cord through a splicer all the way across my living room yep. and plug it directly into my switch. Yep. Or I'm assuming you could probably plug it, like, if you're in the back of your TV, plug it into the back of your TV. And... How is that convenient? Yeah, I don't. It's not. Again, that, again, my biggest thing is how long is your cord? <laughs> well, the thing, even and then like, I get, but let, let's say, let's say, I, I know mean, you can extend it. Well, I know you can extend it. There are but extenders. Again, that's more cords and yeah. more things you have to plug in. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 even then, even then, just imagine people already don't sometimes like having corded controllers, right? Mm -hmm. They don't like running that cord across their living room to their couch. Yep. Why do you think wireless controllers are so popular as they are? People don't want to run that cord back to the system. Because what was a common issue? People tripped over it all the yep. time, yanked the system out, yanked the controller out the of people's cord wasn't hands. wasn't long enough. You know, people with kids, God, it was so hard to even play video games with kids around because they would always want to play with the cords. So now you're telling me that, when I, that I'm going to have that same problem happening again just so I can get audio from my game. A solution that was solved by plugging audio into the Wii U gamepad just last generation, or a solution that was also solved by Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So Nintendo is bringing back an archaic method of voice chat. And I know some people are going to say, yeah, maybe Bluetooth is there. Maybe you can natively talk to the Switch. Even though Nintendo has never once stated that it is even a possibility. Yeah. They have, they've stated to the company. Right. It'd be different if they, if they even were... In a gray area, like, oh, mm -hmm. you, you can vo you can also voice chat through phone. If they said also voice chat through phone, that implies there's something to go along with that. Yep. That there's a different method they're not talking about. But that's not what they're doing. Everything they said is along the company line. And the fact that an officially licensed product that's packaged with certain editions of Splatoon in Japan is coming out and even has to audio splice to make it work. Tells you there's a problem. Oh, definitely. Why? If, if there is a better way to do it, if audio can be streamed to the phone, why are they splicing in the first place? It doesn't look cool. Yeah, no. You know, you get the, I guess you get the funny little dongle. Yeah, you get the funny little Splatoon dongle, but it's like, it, it, no, one, nothing about that is good. Yeah, like, no. For all the people that were getting on my case about like, oh my gosh, what what's wrong with you? You're an entitled, you're this and that. I'm like, I'm, I don't buy entitled. How am I... How are my complaints illegitimate? Yeah, right. Like, I don't know. Uh, like one for starters, 
in case this isn't clear to some people, Nintendo Prime is kind of my little brainchild, right? So like a lot of what I talk about is opinions. And if you don't like my opinion, that's okay. I don't I don't like I'm not complaining that people are complaining about what I said because they they can not like what I have to say. That's yeah. okay. No one has to like what I have to say. No one has to no, half the time yeah. I don't. No. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. Like people don't have to agree with me. I don't care if they agree with me. But to be like I don't have legit criticism of something that to me is so obviously stupid. Yeah, right. It, it it's creating a problem that was solved decades ago. It's yeah. like I I don't know. I I always thought worst case scenario, one chord to your phone, you're done. Mm-hmm. And now we just got presented. No, it's two chords dongle or or maybe you don't have to get the dongle. Maybe you could just get a, a normal audio splicer from Walmart for two bucks. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Because maybe that's literally all it's doing is just bringing two audio feeds into the same place. I don't know. But whatever the case may be, it's inconvenient. And for a system that is advertised as its portability, it is terrible for portability to do that. Yeah. Also, then the, you know, criticisms things. You know, just because we are a Nintendo channel and a Nintendo site doesn't mean we can't criticize Nintendo either. Yeah, yeah. The one guy, the one guy, the one guy. You're Nintendo Prime, and you know, you're a pussy ass. Blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, with your complaints, and it's like, what does what does us being Nintendo Prime have to do with complaints about Nintendo? Right. No. I as I've as I've said in previous videos, or one specific video for sure. I don't like fanboyism. I don't like console wars. I hate it. I think they're all inherently stupid. Yeah. I think it creates fun conversation at times. Oh, I right, admit right, you right, can, yeah. you can get into some fun conversation, but as long as that fun conversation is constructive and oftentimes fanboy and console war conversations and all of you guys have probably seen it, it's rarely constructive. It's just talking to brick walls across the board. Oh yeah. And that's what it sometimes feels like when I'm talking to even just some people who enjoy the Nintendo Prime content. And that's why this that's why this upset me because it felt like people were Mad at me for not being a fanboy. That's yeah, what it, that's what it kind yeah, of felt yeah, like. Yeah, it felt like because I am chastising Nintendo over something when we have no other information. Okay, I can't assume something exists. I can't assume there's more to this when there hasn't been anything else. Yeah, Nintendo has said from from the beginning it's through your phone. Their online their online services statement says it's through your phone. Yep. And now we have evidence, real life officially licensed evidence, it's through your phone. <laughs> and now through that evidence that it has no way to bring game audio in. Yeah. So you have to splice your audio. It's like I'm not trying to say that there isn't a better way. We all know there is. We all know that Bluetooth is the answer. We know the Switch has Bluetooth. We know it should be as simple as Nintendo realizing, hey, maybe it should be natively on the Switch so we could just offer a Bluetooth option. Mm-hmm. But that's not what they're saying. And I know here's where, here's where someone's going to come in and say, oh, well, you know what they could release? A, a thing that Bluetooths to your phone, and then it's just one cord running to your Switch. They could. Sure. That fixes a little bit of the portability problem. Mm-hmm. It doesn't fix the fact I have to look at my Switch and hook things up and look at my phone and check two devices to play a game online. It doesn't fix that. It doesn't fix the fact that if lobbies and everything are handled on here, oh, I want to, uh, I'm, I'm in a match and I want to quick check. Oh, do my friends get into this game? Let me look at my phone as the match is going on. Yep. It doesn't fix that. It doesn't fix the fact I still have to run a cord across my living room, which is a solution that wireless controllers fixed yeah. a long time ago. It kind of fixes that because it'll stream the Bluetooth to your phone and then you can have your phone sitting next to you. How does that fix the game audio? You still got to get the audio from the TV. If it streams the blue, if it streams Bluetooth sound from the, the, the right now, Bluetooth headsets headsets do not work with the Nintendo Switch without a, a you hooking up a physical Bluetooth thing into it. Like my Switch over there, when I use my live streams, it, it has a literal device that broadcasts Bluetooth out in yeah. the audio jack. So like you can set it up to do that. Yeah. Yourself by yeah. buying extra stuff. Yeah. And again, mine's wireless, but I gotta remember to charge it, otherwise it dies and sucks. Yep. But right now, the default way they want you to do it is running a cord across. Oh the yeah, room. yeah, no, definitely. So even if those headsets are Bluetooth, that only works on my phone. It's got nothing to do with the switch. I'd yeah. still have to run a cord from my headphone to the, and that's assuming that the headphone supports you using Bluetooth and a 
cord at the same time, which I'm assuming they could release one that does. Mm -hmm. But this still, I still have to run a cord across my living room unless I personally go out and buy a non-supported, non-officially licensed Bluetooth device to make my Switch have Bluetooth. Yeah. It's just a generic, like, I spent, like, 30 bucks on that thing. So people got to go buy a $30 add-on for that and have to plug it into their Switch every time they want to use Bluetooth. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I mean, that that's what, where I'm getting at. There's nothing convenient. If, if there's nothing else you guys should get out of this brief conversation, it's that this is convoluted. Beyond belief. Yes, I just explained how they could work around it. I can hook up. Bluetooth to that, hook up Bluetooth up, to, Bluetooth up to my phone, and pray to God the headset I'm working lets me receive two different Bluetooth signals and the one audio signal in my mm-hmm. in my headset. And I'm sure there's probably headsets that exist that do it. I don't know of any. I know of phones well, that let you hook up multiple headphones to it. The only other thing I could see would be to receive audio from your Bluetooth coming out of your switch to your phone, and then somehow... But the app that, would have to support yes, that. Yes, the app would have to support that. And if the app doesn't support that natively... Why would they add in add in a thing for where you have to go out and buy other company stuff that Nintendo makes no money from? Yeah, I, to I, enable that ability. I, I, I'm yeah. just throwing it out there. I'm not <laughs> saying it. That's what. Either it is, way, but... either way, let's assume best case scenario, right? Yeah. The the app allows you to receive Bluetooth from sound from your Switch or your TV if you hook up a Bluetooth adapter to it. Let's say mm-hmm. you can. Yeah. You could take my adapter, hook it up, and connect your phone to that Bluetooth, and mm-hmm. it will. Recognize, and then you can run a cord from here into there, or, or mm-hmm. a Bluetooth headset over. Let's assume that's possible. Why are you making me buy more stuff just to voice chat? Wasn't the whole point yeah. of you putting the app on here is everyone has a smartphone? Yeah. Not everyone has extra Bluetooth receivers. I sure as heck didn't. I didn't yeah. even know I needed one until the Switch didn't have Bluetooth. Yeah. And the only reason I was even thinking about Bluetooth on the Switch is because the controller doesn't have an audio jack. Mm-hmm. So it's like Nintendo created a problem, then they compounded it by not having Bluetooth enabled. I'm not saying it doesn't have the capability. It's just not, maybe they have it and it's not enabled. Or maybe it interferes with the Joy-Cons. I have no idea. But reality is, the only way right now to get audio from your Switch, if you're using it as a home console, is to plug an audio jack into the yep. headphone yep. jack. And run it across your floor. And the, the only way without buying extra peripherals. Right. Like, at least when they at least when they didn't include the Ethernet jack, you can still connect your Switch to the Internet. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's still a way to do it natively. Yeah. It's not ideal. It's ridiculous to me the dock doesn't have a native Ethernet port on it. Right. So with how cheap they are, I don't, like a couple pennies, I don't know why they couldn't just throw it on the board. They didn't. They still want you to buy the dongle if you want direct internet like that. But at least you can still connect Wi-Fi, and they don't seem to restrict the Wi-Fi pipeline. So as long as you have a good enough Wi-Fi network and good enough internet, you're probably not going to need to hook it up wired anyways. Mm -hmm. So at least where they didn't really give you one solution without buying an add-on, they provided another Well, Here, they don't give you the Bluetooth solution, and they don't give you the audio jack on the thing. So it's not like they they didn't give you one, but at least they gave you another option. It's No, they didn't give you any option. Yeah. Uh, except for the fact when you use it in portable mode, yes, the headphone jack on the Switch is convenient when you use it in portable mode. But would it have been so hard to put one of the headphone jacks, say, on the left, on the bottom of the left Joy-Con? Probably not. The IR sensor is on the other one, so you're not going to put it there. But there's nothing on the bottom of the left Joy-Con. Why not put the headphone jack there? I don't know. Then it's available all the time. On on the Pro Controller, you can move it to a more convenient spot, but it's available all the like time. Like where it is on the Xbox? <laughs> yeah. Or even, as people said, fine, leave the audio jack where it is on the Switch, but then on at least on the grip, put an audio jack on there mm-hmm. with a board that can communicate to the Switch mm-hmm. through the Joy-Cons yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, put it, and in, in, if you're not going to do that, you can at least do it on the Pro Controller. Yeah, definitely. You charge 70 bucks for it. Is it that hard to throw on a, a little audio jack? And the thing is, I actually think the pricing for the for the Pro Controller and the Joy-Cons is completely justified based on the technology in it. I think, I understand why it's 80 bucks for a set of Joy-Cons and $70 for a Pro Controller. They contain a lot more tech in them than the other controllers that yeah. cost cheaper. I right. get it. It makes sense. It, it, it sucks at a consumer level because right. you're constantly comparing yeah. it to things that are cheaper. Right, for sure. But it's still one of those things that I know... 
that it costs more to make these. So I, as someone who is knowledgeable like that, understands it. I can't understand this audio solution. And what I can't also understand is that it's an audio solution people are going to be paying for. Oh, yeah. And I understand the payments. Now that we have some details are cheap, but it, it, it's still – you're making it more difficult than things need to be. You're creating problems that have already been solved. Yep. That's what I, that's the only thing I don't understand about this is they're making a mountain out of a molehill. Voice chat has already been solved. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need an evolution. Yeah, no. I always said the phone app is a nice thing as an aside. Like, oh, my buddies are playing Switch. Maybe I can stream their gameplay and chat with them while I'm not even playing Switch. That's cool. Yeah. That's a side dish, a convenient a convenient thing to add in addition to normal voice oh, definitely. chat. But if you don't even offer the bare standard for it, that strips away the entire purpose of voice chat. And that ends up making voice chat so inconvenient that it's going to end up being the most people don't even bother. Mm -hmm. So what's if the that's the case, it? if that's the case, one, what's the point of having it? Two, if you're going to have it, why are you charging for something no one's going to use? Yeah. Or very well, few people are going to You're use. getting other things with it though. With yeah, yeah, well yeah, yeah. We'll get into that in a yeah. little bit. But the point is like it should be under it should be under the free box then. If yeah. it's but it's not. It's one of the primary things they say. Like oh, they no, no, advertise yeah. it specific it's like And again, I hope that there's more. I hope that Nintendo comes out and says, no, full Bluetooth is accept is out there and it goes native to Switch and you you can still manage it through your app that can communicate with your Switch, mm -hmm. but it's still natively done through the Switch. This just manages it. Mm -hmm. This just manages it so you save processing power yep. for it. I understand that. Yes. Because then you're just using, you're basically just using the Switch to broadcast to the internet where this actually does all the micromanaging of it. That I understand. But Nintendo has never stated that. They've never proven that. And they've never released any information that even suggests it's a possibility. And that doesn't mean it's not a possibility. But it means my reaction in this whole conversation is based on the facts. It's based on what we know. Right. We know you can do voice chat through your phone. We know that Nintendo has said voice chat is required to be done through your phone. We know that the first time we've seen voice chat, it required an audio splicer for the headphones. So... That's what we know. I can't, I can't react to, I can't, you're asking people that want me to be happy about it or not complain. You're asking me to stop assuming or to assume that there's more. When nothing's ever been proven or. If we've there. learned nothing, if you guys have followed Nintendo for a long time, here's what you should always learn. Don't assume anything. Yeah. Did people really think the Wii was going to have motion controls or the DS was going to have two screens at the time? When portables had always been one screen, like, I, okay, Game and Watch, I know, doesn't fit two screens, but you know what I mean. The popular, the popular Game Boy Advance, you, no one saw the DS coming. No one saw even the 3DS, with the 3D aspect, no glasses, free 3D. No one's. If anything, you learn with Nintendo, you can't assume anything. Like we, there's a lot of people that think, oh, there'll be a Metroid game at E3. Why? Well, where, where have they hinted there's yeah. going to be a Metroid game? Because you and, want there to be a Metroid game, and you assume Nintendo's going to do it. Well, and it's not even just Nintendo not hinting. It's nobody hinting. It's like... Yeah, that's the, what I'm saying. Like, they, ha they have had a, a consistent, constant message about how voice chat is handled. And now we've seen a proof of concept that shows how voice chat is handled. Until they show us something different, or tell us anything different, we're left with what they tell us. And these are the facts. The facts are you need an app to do voice chat. You voice chat through your phone, and as of right now, you have, have we have no known way to get audio th through any other way from your Switch outside of audio splicing. Mm -hmm. And again, inconvenience, extra steps for the consumer. In terms of Reggie mentioning that we're getting rid of clunky headphone or clunky, you headsets. know, headsets. Well, when you replace clunky headsets with clunky setups, yeah, that's, it's not any better. It's that's worse. worse. So. Anyways, we'll move on to our second topic because I, I think you don't have much to say because you're basically in total agreement, I think. <laughs> Definitely. Like, like, this is so stupid. Definitely. So stupid. I, I'm i not even going to apologize. I'm, it's just dumb. Yep. Nope. I'm right there with you. 